नमस्ते बिटिया हमेशा खुश रहो बिटिया अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू यू ऑल माई सेल्फ जे बी एन डॉक्टर रवि जैन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस ऑफ मेडिसिन एंड फैकल्टी ऑफ होम्योपैथिक साइंस एट ज्योति विद्यापीठ वुमेंस यूनिवर्सिटी चैपर इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू अवर लोकोमोटर सिस्टम ऑन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अनादर इंपॉर्टेंट डिजीज दैट इज रिमेटॉइड आर्थोनिटिस In the last lecture, we had discussed about osteoarthritis, the definition, the etiopathogenesis, the clinical features, the investigations, and the management. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss an, about another important disease of the locomotor system, that is rheumatoid arthritis. So let's continue with rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis. It is a chronic inflammatory disease of the unknown etiology. and it is marked by symmetrical peripheral polyarthritis in osteoarthritis as we all know there was involvement of the larger joint and it was actually non inflammatory but in rheumatoid arthritis it is basically a chronic inflammatory disease the exact cause for the uh, rheumatoid arthritis is not known and it is characterized by symmetrical peripheral polyarthritis in rheumatoid arthritis the joint involvement was asymmetrical but in case of uh, rheumatoid arthritis it is symmetrical involvement uh, with the peripheral polyarthritis it is the most common form of chronic inflammatory arthritis so if we are talking about inflammatory diseases affecting the joint then it is the most common form of chronic inflammatory arthritis it is a chronic multi system disease so rheumatoid arthritis not only affects the joint but also affects other systems of the body of unknown etiology that is characterized by persistent inflammatory synovitis there is inflammation of the synovium or the synovial joint and it is usually involving the peripheral joint symmetrically peripheral joint symmetrically are involved whereas in case of rheumatoid arthritis there was involvement of the larger joints and asymmetrical involvement it often result into the joint damage and physical disability so destruction of the joint and physical uh, disability is most commonly seen in case of rheumatoid arthritis now uh, what happens what is the pathophysiology of rheumatoid synovitis in case of rheumatoid synovitis we are going to see bursitis there will be inflammation lot of inflammation of the bursa that will be known as bursitis of the tendon that is known as tendonitis there will be erosion of the bones and cartilage there will also be synovitis and uh, involvement of the poly polymorphonuclear leukocytes and inflammation of the subchondral bone now the hallmark hallmarks of rheumatoid arthritis whenever a patient of rheumatoid arthritis is coming to us we are going to see the following features it will include cartilage destruction bony erosion and joint deformity we have also observed three changes in case of rheumatoid osteoarthritis the three changes of osteoarthritis included focal loss of the articular cartilage we had proliferation of the new bone and remodeling of the joint contour whereas in case of rheumatoid arthritis we are going to see cartilaginous destruction bony erosion and joint deformity so there is cartilage destruction there is bony erosion and joint deformity in the ppt that i have given you uh, i have shown you the pictures of the case of rheumatoid arthritis there will be symmetrical involvement of the smaller joints of the body although larger joints are also involved now incidence let us talk about the incidence and epidemiology rheumatoid arthritis it occurs in around 0.5 to 1% of the total population so out of the total population uh, it is occurring in 0.5 to 1% the women are affected three times more common than men so uh, we have Uh, females that are more prone for developing uh, rheumatoid arthritis, as we have seen in case of osteoarthritis, the ratio is three to one. The incidence of rheumatoid arthritis increases between the age group of twenty-five to fifty-five years of age, so it is more commonly seen in the young adults. Whereas uh, we have seen that osteoarthritis was common in the old age, greater than sixty years of age. So age incidence of rheumatoid arthritis is between twenty-five to fifty-five years of age, after which. there is plateau until 75 years and then decreases there are various factors that are responsible for development of uh, rheumatoid arthritis the factors include both genetic factors and the environmental factors which play a major role in initiating the disease 
it is associated with the gene that is known as HLA BR4. So let us revise the incidence. It occurs in about 0.5 to 1% of the population. Uh, females are more prone for development of rheumatoid arthritis with a ratio of 3 to 1. The incidence increases with age, and the peak ratio occurs between the age of 25 to 45 years, 55 years of age. Then it becomes plateaus and then decreases. Both the genetic and environmental factors play an important role, and uh, there is an association of the gene HLA BR4. Now, what is the pathophysiology that is involved? Rheumatoid arthritis, it is an immunologically mediated event in which the joint injury occurs. So, there is uh, injury of the joints which uh, occurs uh, leading to uh, the development of synovial hyperplasia. There is synovial hyperplasia, uh, lymphocytic infiltration of the synovium, local production of cytokines and chemokinins by the activated lymphocytes, macrophages and fibroblasts. So we have synovial hyperplasia, lymphocytic inflammation and infiltration of the synovium, local production of cytokinins and chemokinins by the activated lymphocytes and macrophages and fibroblasts. Now these act on the endothelium uh, with the synovial fibroblast, bone cells and chondrocytes to promote swelling and congestion of the synovial membrane and the destruction of bone, cartilage and soft tissue. So there is destruction of the bone, cartilage and the soft tissue by the uh, synovial fibroblast, bone cells and chondrocytes and which produces congestion of the synovial membrane leading to destruction of bone, cartilage and the soft tissue. I have shown you the picture, the most important feature in case of rheumatoid arthritis is the tennis formation. So you have to remember this term tennis formation. Uh, we have studied osteoarthritis. There was uh, destruction, but inflammation was not there. But in case of rheumatoid arthritis, there's a great degree of inflammation with the uh, erosion of the bone, tennis formation, presence of the T-cells, plasma cells, neutrophils, B-cells, and hyperplastic synovial membrane. Now, uh, in the pathophysiology, the B cells release immunoglobulin. So there are presence of B cells which release the immunoglobulins, including the rheumatoid factor. So a rheumatoid factor is an important feature or the important diagnostic technique to assess the presence of rheumatoid arthritis in an individual, which can form immune complex within the joint and in extraarticular tissue, leading to vasculitis. There is lymphoid follicle formed within the synovial membrane leading to inflammatory granular tissue or the penis formation. So in case of rheumatoid arthritis, you have to remember that there is penis formation, which spreads over and under the articular cartilage, which is progressively eroded and destroyed. So there is erosion and destruction of the uh, cartilage, articular cartilage. There is fibrous or bony ankylosis that occurs, muscle adjacent to the inflamed joints atrophy and is infiltrated by the lymphocytes. So what happens is there is a B cell release immunoglobulins, including the rheumatoid factor, which can form immune complex within the joints and in the extraarticular tissue. This leads to the vasculitis. There is a lymphoid follicular form within the synovial membrane with the formation of inflammatory granular tissue, granulation tissue that is known as PANUS. So inflammatory granulation tissue or the PANUS formation is a typical feature of rheumatoid arthritis, which spreads over and under the articular cartilage which is progressively eroded and destroyed. There is fibrous or bony ankylosis that occurs and there is adjacent, uh, it is adjacent to the inflamed joints, atrophy and is infiltrated by lymphocytes. Now I have shown you the different pictures and the different x-rays showing uh, the changes that are occurring in case of rheumatoid arthritis, the complete destruction of the joint leading to the complete fusion, that is uh, complete fusion, reduction of the joint space and fusion of the bones. So rheumatoid nodules develop and uh, rheumatoid nodules consist of central area of fibroblast material that is surrounded by palisade of proliferating mononuclear cells. Because there is inflammation in the joints, so uh, we are going to see the rheumatoid nodules and uh, that will be surrounded by palisade of proliferating mononuclear cells. Lymph nodes in the rheumatoid arthritis are hyperplastic, showing many lymphoid follicles and numerous plasma cells. The rheumatoid arthritis is characterized by infiltration of synovial membrane with lymphocytes, plasma cells, and macrophages. So because it is an inflammatory disease, so there will be infiltration of the lymphocytes, plasma cells, and macrophages in the joint space of the synovial membrane. So you are going to see rheumatoid nodules. I have shown you the pictures of different types of rheumatoid nodules 
in the PPT and in the e notes that I have uploaded on the portal jw.in. Now, what are the clinical manifestations? Whenever a patient of rheumatoid arthritis is coming to us, what are the clinical manifestations? The course of rheumatoid arthritis is quite variable. Right? So we have a lot of symptoms that we can see in case of rheumatoid arthritis. It typically results from inflammation of the joints, tendon or bursa. So there is inflammation of the joints, there is inflammation of the tendon and the bursa. The patient often complains of early morning stiffness. So whenever a patient is rising in the morning, there is early morning stiffness that is lasting for more than one hour and it eases with the physical activity. So there is joint stiffness lasting for more than one hour and it eases with the physical activity, just like the symptoms of S-tops. And the earliest involvement joint are typically the smaller joints of hands and feet. So what you are going to see in this case is there is a wide variety of the symptoms that uh, we are going to see in case of rheumatoid arthritis. It typically results from inflammation of the joints, tendons and bursa. The patient often complains of early morning stiffness. There is early morning stiffness. It eases with the uh, movement. The earliest involvement of joints are typically the smaller joints of hands and feet. Now, what is the pattern of involvement of the joint? The involvement of joint can be, there can be involvement of single joint that is known as monoarticular or there can be involvement of the a uh, few joints, less than four joints, that is known as oligoarticular. And there can also be involvement of the multiple joints, that is known as polyarticular, that includes greater than five joints. And it is usually symmetrical in distribution. So the pattern of joint involvement is usually monoarticular, oligoarticular, and polyarticular. Monoarticular involvement of single joint, oligo, less than four, and polyarticular with involvement of greater than five joints. It is usually symmetrical in distribution. Once the disease process of rheumatoid arthritis is established, the wrist metacarpophalangeal MCP and proximal interphalangeal joints are most frequently involved. The joints are usually tender and swollen. So there is hard, painful and swollen joints. Uh, they test positive for the serum uh, rheumatoid factor or anti-CCP antibodies like anti-CCP is cyclic citrulline protein antibodies and have higher scores for physical disability. So in case of rheumatoid arthritis, there is a higher scale for physical disability. Now there are different types of deformities that we are going to see in case of rheumatoid arthritis. So uh, in this lecture, we are going to discuss only till this point because uh, there are a lot of things that are remaining. And uh, we are going to discuss about different types of deformities, uh, various extra articular manifestations of uh, rheumatoid arthritis and also uh, the criteria for diagnosis of osteo uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So a rest part of the rheumatoid arthritis, uh, we are going to uh, discuss in the next lecture. So uh, now let's revise the things that we have just covered. So let's revise what is uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is basically a chronic inflammatory disease of unknown etiology that is marked by symmetrical or peripheral polyarthritis. It is the most common form of chronic inflammatory arthritis, a chronic multisystem disease of unknown etiology that is characterized by persistent inflammatory synovitis, usually involving peripheral joints symmetrically. It often results in joint damage and physical disability. Uh, what are the different changes that we are going to see? We are going to see the bursitis, tendinitis, erosion of the bones and cartilage, synovitis, polymorphonuclear leukocytosis, uh, inflammation of the subchondral bone. Now, hallmarks of the uh, rheumatoid arthritis includes three points. One is cartilage destruction. Second is the bony erosion. And the third one is joint deformity. I will again revise cartilage destruction, bony erosion, and joint deformities. Whereas the hallmarks of osteoarthritis were focal loss of hyaline cartilage, proliferation of the new bone, and remodeling of the joint contour. Incidence was uh, rheumatoid arthritis was affecting 0.5 to 1% of the population. With uh, more of females were affected, the age group, especially 25 to 55 years of age, are more prone, and uh, genetic and environmental factors are responsible for development of rheumatoid arthritis with the involvement of the HLA BR4 gene. Pathophysiology uh, in pathophysiology, we have discussed about that uh, RA is an immunologically mediated event in which the joint injury occurring from synovial hyperplasia lymphocytic infiltration of the synovium and local production of cytokinins or chemokinins by the activated lymphocytes, macrophages, and fibroblasts. 
These acts on the endothelium, synovial fibroblast, bone cells, and control cells to promote swelling and congestion of the synovial membrane and destruction of the bone, cartilage, and soft tissues. The B cells were releasing immunoglobulins, including the rheumatoid factor, which can form the immune complex within the joint and in the extraarticular surface tissues, leading to vasculitis. The lymphoid follicles from within the synovial membrane, inflammatory granulation tissue, that is, penis was forming. Penis is an important feature of rheumatoid arthritis, which spreads over and under the articular cartilage, which is progressively eroded and destroyed. There is fibrous or bony ankylosis that occurs, and muscles adjacent to the inflamed joints atrophy and is infiltrated by the lymphocytes. Rheumatoid nodules were developing, and what are rheumatoid nodules? It consists of a central area of fibrinoid material that is surrounded by the palisade of proliferating mononuclear cells. There were lymph nodes in the rheumatoid arthritis are hyperplastic and showing many lymphoid follicles and numerous plasma cells. Rheumatoid arthritis is characterized by infiltration of the synovial membrane with lymphocytes, plasma cells, and macrophages. The clinical manifestations were quite variable and it typically results from inflammation of the joints, tendons, and the bursa. The patient often complains of early morning stiffness that is lasting for around one hour and then it is better by movement. The earliest involved joints are typically the smaller joints of hands and feet. The pattern of joint involvement is usually, if it is involving single joint, it is known as monoarticular, few joints, oligoarticular, which include less than four, and polyarticular, with greater than five joints involvement, and it is usually symmetrical involvement. Once the disease process, uh, rheumatoid arthritis is established, the wrist, metacarpophalangeal joint, and the proximal interphalangeal joints are most commonly frequently affected with this joints. The joints are usually tender, painful and swollen. Now, when we are going to test for it, we have to check for the rheumatoid factor, RF factor and also anti-CCP antibodies. Anti-CCP consists of anti-cyclic citrullinated protein antibodies and they have higher score for, higher the score of these things, higher is the physical disability. Now, this was all for uh, today. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss about the deformities of rheumatoid arthritis. So this session is powered by Digital Version 2.0, Jyoti Vidya Performance University. I hope you have understood this session properly. If you have any query, please mention in the comment box and I'll try to resolve it. So uh, your homework for today is to go through the book and just note down all the important things uh, of the rheumatoid arthritis that we have discussed. Rheumatoid arthritis is an important uh, question for the examination point of view. Uh, we get many times osteoarthritis, many times rheumatoid arthritis in the examination. But rheumatoid arthritis is more commonly asked in the examination. So this was all for today. In the next lecture, we are going to continue with the deformities of the rheumatoid arthritis. This was all for today. Thank you very much. Have a good day.